Arsenal Fan TV. I'm over here in Germany, in Dortmund to be precise, about to take in a Borussia Dortmund game. Now, remember we've done that video podcast a couple of months ago where we spoke about the atmosphere at Arsenal and what we could do to improve it. Well, you know what? I thought I'd come over here to Dortmund and uh, take in the atmosphere here. They're famed for having a brilliant atmosphere, for having this wonderful, wonderful yellow wall. So I thought to myself, let me come over, check it out and see what they do and see if there's anything that we can take from them and bring back to the Emirates. So I'm here on a little undercover mission. We're going to go in now and take in the atmosphere here and find out if we can bring some of it back to the Emirates. Where's your famous atmosphere? Where's your famous atmosphere?
Brentford after that. What an incredible atmosphere. What brilliant fans. The drumming. It was incredible. Dortmund didn't even play well, to be honest. But the fans here. Fantastic. I'm trained. So that was fantastic. A fantastic atmosphere at Borussia Dortmund. I have to admit, I was a bit jealous. You know, standing there on those terraces, taking in the atmosphere. And I just wanted to go for a few of my findings after being there in Dortmund. So number one, terraces. Now, you know, it adds to the atmosphere. And there's this whole debate going on in the UK at the moment about safe standing. We know that after Hillsborough, um, all terraces in this country were banned and all the stadiums are all seater. But over there in Dortmund, basically, I didn't even see a steward. There was nobody coming around saying sit down or nothing like that. That's one of the things that at the Emirates needs to be sorted. I'm lucky that where I stand at the Emirates, um, they allow the fans to more or less stand in block six in the North Bank. They don't really tell you to sit down and consequently the fans have stood up nearly all the time and it adds to the atmosphere in that area. But I've sat in other parts of the stadium where basically the stewards every second are telling you to sit down, sit down, sit down. Something needs to be done on that. There needs to be something, I don't know, more appropriate, you know, when it comes to, you know, the stewards and their interaction with the fans. But one thing that we definitely, definitely need at the Emirates, and I can say 100% after going to Dortmund and standing on their famous yellow wall is, we need a singing section. If you looked at the stadium, the yellow wall where we were stood, that is the singing section. It's basically what they've said to everybody that comes in there. If you come in there, it's going to be noisy. It's going to be loud. It's going to be intense. You might even get a bit of beer thrown over you. That was another thing. They're allowed to bring beer into the game. I'm not saying that in England. I'm not sure if that would be a good idea. But they can bring a pint of beer in and some of that got thrown over. But that's just how it is. It's pretty raucous in there. We need a singing area at the Emirates. We need one. I think we need two. I think we need one in the North Bank. And I think we need another one um, in the clock end. <clears throat> excuse me. Right next to where the away fans are. And it would add and help the atmosphere at the Emirates 100%. So definitely we need a singing area. That's 100%. Now at Dortmund there in their singing area, what you would have noticed in the video is that they almost, they, they got a drummer and I know not everybody's for drummers, but let me tell you that drummer, the way he was drumming and everything just kept it going. It was just constant. They didn't stop singing at Dortmund until half time. They were singing before the game. They stopped at half time like they took a break and then they started again. And it's non-stop, constant right throughout the game. The drummer works if you get it right, right? So I, I, I would be up for having a drummer at the Emirates, right? Maybe in a different style and I'll come to that in a minute. They also had like a hype man. You noticed it. They had literally like a bandstand there. They had the drummer there. And then they had two guys. One guy had a megaphone and another guy had a microphone. And if you notice also, there was two sets there where speakers were, which has obviously been put in there by the club. And the guy was just hyping the crowd. You know, just like if you go to a rap concert and you've got a hype man. That's what he was doing. He had the mic and he was like, sing up. And he was leading all the songs. And Tao is our cameraman. Luckily, he speaks fluent German. And I was asking him sometimes, what's he saying, Tao? What did he just say? And he was saying, oh, he's saying things like, come on, we need to get behind the team more. Let's get into this song. Let's it was brilliant. Now, I know in this country, and it's one thing I love about English football fans, is that we like spontaneous songs, Right? All of the, the, the one thing I would say at Dortmund, all of the songs are led. So literally, you don't hear the crowd start any songs themselves. Those guys started all the songs and everybody just followed. I'd like a mixture because I don't want to lose that element that we have in the UK where we come up with funny, spontaneous songs. You know, I mean, every ground you go to around the country, every fan, we're brilliant at doing it in, in the England. It's that English sense of humour. I don't want to lose that. So for me, there need to be a balance between songs being led and fans making up songs. But definitely, 
that hype man and that drummer, it worked. And the crowd were just constantly, constantly singing, 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 singing. It was brilliant. It reminded me of like going to football back in the day. There was a lot of young fans there. Again, that's a harder problem to solve at the Emirates because of the prices. This is where ticket prices come into things. Ticket prices at Dortmund are so cheap that there's loads of young fans there. There was loads of women there. I couldn't believe how many women there was on that yellow wall. Loads. And they were all getting into it. It was brilliant. There was loads of young fans there. There was loads of older fans there as well. Really getting into it, really jumping up. They loved it. It was fantastic. And definitely it showed you what a singing section brings. Another fantastic thing I thought was the way they built it up before the game, right? So those same guys that you see right down at the front, I don't know if you saw it in the video, you saw a part where they're handing out flags. And I've never seen so many flags in a football crowd in my life. Now at the Emirates, we got two guys who stand in front and just wave some flags like that when the players come out and when uh, we score. No flags are waved apart from that. And we've seen that at the Emirates before in games in Champions League and that when flags are handed out to fans, they wave them. It creates a great atmosphere. That's what they do at Dortmund. They hand out a load of flags to people at the front. They've obviously probably checked a load of those people and said, listen, they've probably got rules and saying, listen, you can't do this with a flag and that with a flag because, you know, a flagpole could be dangerous. But why couldn't we do stuff like that at the Emirates where you say you pick, you know, 30, 40 people and you say, right, we give you a little health and safety training on when, when you've got those flags, but those guys wave flags constantly throughout the game. Helps the atmosphere. It's brilliant. It looks great as well, right? So I thought, thought that was fantastic. Before the, before the players even came out on the pitch, they must have had about 50 people on the pitch waving flags. That looked brilliant as well. They came out to a theme music. <clears throat> as a matter of fact, Borussia Dortmund seemed to have about three theme musics. Right, which they played all three of them before the game. They come out to You Never Walk Alone. I know you can see in the video, I wasn't too enthusiastic about singing that for obvious reasons, right? But they come out to a theme and everyone's got their scarves held aloft and it creates excitement. At the Emirates, what do we come out to? A clock, ding, ding, ding. No, where's our theme music? We need a theme music at the Emirates. So, so many things we can learn from, from watching that video, right? And let me just break it down again. Number one, most importantly, we need a singing section. Number two, a hype man would work as long as it's balanced with the spontaneous singing that we love over here at English football. A drummer, as long as, again, it's balanced. I don't think we could do it exactly like how Dortmund do it. But if we did it in a balanced way, that would be great, right? Bringing those things, like safe standing would be brilliant, but we know that that's a whole nother debate and that might take time to get done. But definitely the stewards need to be less, you know, the way they're just telling people constantly to sit down. Maybe you tell people to sit down in certain areas, but in those singing sections, right, that is where everybody can be loud and everybody can be boisterous and... A lot of people say to themselves, well, how could you do a singing section? Because you've got fans that have sat there for years and they're not going to want to give up their seats. And I've already thought of a way in which it can be done, right? You basically say, right, you make an announcement, say for the coming season, and you say, right, block whatever it's going to be, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or whatever it's going to be. We are designating that this season for singing. It's going to be loud, it's going to be drums, it's going to be flags, right? If you don't want to be part of that, you can move to other, you know, and some sort of systems put in place where fans can swap. So you say to a fans, if you want to be in the singing section, you apply to move. And you say to other fans, if you want to move out of the singing section because it's too loud for you, you apply to move the other way and fans can swap. And if a fan decides to say to himself, no, I want to stay in the singing section, then he's got to get involved, hasn't he? It's easy to do. And I would just love at Arsenal 
for us to have an atmosphere like they do at Borussia Dortmund. I mean, the final thing I've got to say is, did you see the way the players came over and interacted with the fans at the end of the game? It was brilliant. They came over. The guy on the mic again, I, I got Tao to translate. He was saying, here comes the players. Let's, you know, let's really give them, sing for them, right? They came over, they sung to the players. The players started jumping up, jumping up. Then they said, it wasn't a cup game. It wasn't like, you know, the semi-final of the FA Cup or the final. It was just a league game and they're playing a team called Ingolstadt. That would be the equivalent of us playing Sunderland or somebody like that, where we know unless Arsenal were well on top, he'd be dead quiet. And Dortmund only won that game 1-0. And they didn't play well either. They didn't play, didn't really deserve to win the game. And their fans got behind the team. Every single player and the coach, Thomas Tuchel, and the coaching staff came up and acknowledged the crowd. When do you ever see that at the Emirates? Look at the connection. Because of the, the way the, the crowd is and the Look at the connection between the team and the players. Wouldn't that be a great thing if we had that here? You know, at the moment we've got banners and stuff like, oh, I know there's been problems around Arsenal, but... And you know another thing, just before I go here, but I have to mention this, right? Max, who was our great host and Dortmund fan over there, said to us that if a player is playing badly, and having a bad time, and he pointed out Matthias Ginter has been having a bad time over there in Dortmund at this season. He goes, the guys who are singing and that deliberately get behind that player to try and lift that player. So he'll be on the mic saying, let's get behind Ginter. Let's be... Not boo him. Not, ah, come on, you effing... No, let's get behind him. So there's a lot of things we can learn from Borussia Dortmund... Thanks to Max for hosting us over there. We're now putting together all the findings that we've got, all the findings that we received from you guys. And once again, thank you very much after we did that excellent podcast on Atmosphere. We're putting it together in a document. We're going to go and present that to Ivan Gazidis, Arsenal Football Club, and say, Ivan, these are our findings. Now, what can we do about this atmosphere? And I'll keep you posted with what happens.